This short video is going to be a presentation on the one-click database feature, part of opcsystems.net. We'll use the Configure OPC Systems application, which is found under the program group opcsystems.net. The first step is you want to define the tags that you're going to monitor, and you can be from a local service or a remote service. And I'm just going to review the one-click OPC feature for you so you can see how to bring in tags from an OPC server automatically. We have a video specifically on this, but it's just as easy to show it to you right now. So what I can do is I can add a group, call it My Group. I can select that group and then click on the one-click OPC button. We can then browse for a starting position within the OPC server that we want to add the items from automatically or just select the OPC server itself to add all of the items from that OPC server. For the one-click database feature to work properly, you will also want to specify to get the data type from the OPC server. So each OPC systems.net tag has a specific data type of say a, a single, a double, a string, a uh, boolean, so we need those data types to be defined in the OPC systems.net tag and this is the way to automatically get those data types from the OPC server. We can also optionally get the descriptions from the OPC server as well. We'll click add tags and it will automatically add those OPC items into the OPC system service. Now we're ready to move to configure data logging and use the one click database feature to log those values from that OPC server. We'll select the service that we want to configure. We'll then click on the one click database button. Here we can browse for a starting position within the OPC systems.net tags. This can be from a local node or if you want to put in an IP address, network node name, or registered domain name, you can do that as well. And then the tags will come from a remote service into this service. Uh, you can also use the optional live data cloud feature as well. So if I wanted to just get the tags from uh, the group called My Group, I can do that. Or if I want to specify all of the tags, what I can do is I can leave that tag group uh, blank and then just specify a group name here as a base group for the data logging. Under step two, we'll specify what type of logging we want to implement, either like event-driven, snapshot to go back in time, or continuous. Step three, we'll take the defaults of the default date and time uh, field name. Step four, we'll specify what database engine we're going to log to, SQL Server, Oracle, Access, MySQL, those are the common ones. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the SQL Server Management Studio so that I can get the server name that I'm going to connect to. This is the database server name right there. I'm going to copy that, paste that into the server field. I'll put in a database name called MyDB and I'll use the table name uh, that we have there uh, as my group. And I'll select Next. And we can also specify to log to a CSV file. That's optional. And we'll click Finish. And it's automatically added two data logging groups to my configuration logging to that database engine. Here under the first group we have 500 fields defined because that's a limit that we had specified. And in the second group we have the remaining fields. Let's try that one more time just so we can see it in action. We'll click on one click database. I'll go ahead and grab all of the tags. This time I'll use a different group name called test. Under step two, I'm going to set the number of tags per group. Instead of 500, I'll set it down to just 10, so you can see more groups being created. Take the defaults in step three. Under step four, we'll log to that SQL Server. Use the same database. You could use a different database if you wanted to as well. We'll click Next and Finish. And now we've added all of those login groups again to that same log to that same database table. Now what we want to do is save the data login configuration with the save button to the top. We'd also want to go back to configure tags and click the save button there to save the tags if you haven't already done so. 
and we'll save it as the new version. And under configure options, we want to specify the default tag configuration file and the default data logging configuration file to automatically load when the service restarts. Under the data buffering tab, there's one more key thing here. We want to enable this feature to set up a directory to buffer data to if there's a database engine problem or a network failure, we'll buffer all of those files into that directory so that you can basically you know, have a database failure for say months, but all of the data will be retained and you won't lose any data in that uh, service. Now we'll go back to the SQL Server Management Studio and we'll take a look at uh, the database and tables there that have been created. They are in an open format. So there are the tables. Let's take a look at uh, group one. We'll make a query on that. And there's all of the values for those fields. Now it could easily just specify select star from the table as well and we get the same results. If you have any questions or need any assistance on the one-click database feature visit the website opcsystems.com if you click on the link which is the evaluation guide you'll see the quick start example section under the training page is a list of all the videos that you can view and under the contact page you'll find our contact information our phone number is 800-533-4994 inside the U.S. Outside of the U.S., it's 303-679-0898. And our email is support at opcsystems.com. We welcome you to contact us if you have any technical questions or questions about any of our product features of opcsystems.net.